to Tips with Andrew. I am Andrew Sapiano. Thank you so much for joining me on this happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having an awesome week so far. I hope you're rocking out whatever goals, hopes, plans, dreams you have, ambitions for this week and are making it happen. Um, quick update before we get started. What do we have here? Convention tickets have gone on sale uh, for, for this year's event. If you are interested in attending and learning more about how to lighten your toxicity load in your life or how um, essential oils can benefit you and your family and or your friends, uh, definitely this is going to be an amazing event. Convention is an awesome event every single year and I love it. Um, you can get tickets to go to the event in person. Um, it's going to be in Utah it, at the stadium where the Utah Jazz play. If you're interested in attending, we can definitely set up some uh, uh, travel arrangements and get you started on that. There's also an online virtual uh, version that's going to go on, and that's the one that I'm super excited about. Um, we are <clears throat> comes with a swag box. There's an option to add that. But in July, prices go up. So we want to make sure to lock in the lowest possible price. I believe it's like $50 difference um, from now until then. So definitely want to save yourself a little bit of money. Um, if, you, if you or somebody you know of is interested in, in um, you know, getting access and learning, uh, attending convention, definitely reach out to me. We'll get you uh, started on that. Um, actually, today is the last day to get Wild Orange for free. It, when you place a 125 PV order uh, with doTERRA, uh, Wild Orange is a great citrus oil, especially for this time of year, right? Nice and get you happy, uh, make you feel uh, <laughs> very alive and, um, and uh, really want to get at it. Lastly, I have launched a weight loss course for beginners. It is an online digital course for download. If you or somebody you know of is interested in getting access, now is the time. There's tons of cool stuff that comes along with the initial launch. And I'm super excited to get it out there into the masses. If Again, if you or somebody you know of is interested, definitely reach out to me and we'll get you rocking and rolling. All right. So, oops. Let's do it. Let's get into today's topic. Um, today is actually something along the lines of uh, show off your smile day, make a, you know make somebody else's day by smiling. And what I thought would be an, actually a wicked thing to talk about was with different ways to be healthier, right? Being healthy is some, it, 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 it's one of those things that when you're making healthy choices and you uh, see the results, of the healthy choices that are being made, it really makes you happy and it makes you want to keep doing. It's a cycle, right? You make healthy choices, then you tend to look better. When you tend to look better, you tend to feel better. And when you feel better, you tend to keep making healthy choices, right? And we want to keep that that uh, sort of circle that, um, there's, there's a word I'm looking for, <laughs> but we want to keep that going, right, all the time. So that's where I wanted to talk a little bit about, right, when we're happy or when we're healthy and we're looking good and we're feeling good, we're happy, right, and we're smiling at everybody. And nothing really else matters to us because, you know, we look good and we feel good and, I mean, really, what else? <laughs> Any, anything else after that is just bonus points, I guess, if you will. Um, so that's where I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some ways that help me to be healthy, right? To uh, incorporate, um, you know, a healthy lifestyle into my busy schedule, right? That's a lot of the things that that people uh, have problems with is eating healthy and having a healthy lifestyle with a busy work schedule, right? It, I get it, right? I totally get it. Uh, my work schedule is really unnecessarily r ridiculous hours, and you know, especially like the to and from commute. And all the extra stuff that goes along with it, plus you know sleeping, then different um, obligations, right? There's a few um, non-negotiables I like to call them that it, that are in life that have to happen, right? And we don't always have time to um, you know uh, be <laughs> think about um, you know eating really uh, healthy health healthily. I guess we could call it, um, or, you know, even, even thinking about fitting that into our schedule, right? Because we do, we, I get it. We, we are very busy people on the go lifestyles, right? We have a lot of stuff going on and, you know, finding time to, <laughs> to, to cook a meal, right? Is, uh, is like trying to pull teeth uh, most of the time, right? So that's where I got some tips that help me 
to sort of incorporate that healthy lifestyle, um, do a little bit of things differently on a daily basis, right? We're not going to it's a healthy lifestyle that we're trying to adopt, right? So it's not something that is going to change overnight. It's not something that we're going to be able to incorporate, um, you know, right away. It's going to be something that's going to take time, and that's why it's called a lifestyle, right? We want to live the lifestyle of somebody that is, you know, a healthy person and that can be there for, you know, their their, their kids and their grandkids and even their spouses, right? So without further ado, let's get going right into it. So the num number one tip I have to be healthier with a busy schedule is to eat breakfast. This one is the most important thing I think of the day. Um, and you know, follow me for a quick minute here. If you are not eating before we go to bed, right? Uh, what you know, we like to give ourselves at least an hour, maybe two. You know, maybe sometimes a little bit longer. Um, uh, you know, what before we go to sleep, right? And then we go to sleep, and then that's another what five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours. I, you know, depending on your schedule, depending on what's going on. Um, and so that way we can get up to like you know, nine, ten, eleven hours, uh, in between meals, right? And then if you're waking up and you're not eating for another, you know, hour, two hours, three hours, maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's lunchtime before you get started. For me, lunchtime is uh, about four hours after, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> after I wake up, right? It would be, it, it actually, it's four hours from the beginning of the shift, right? So after I wake up, it'd probably be about five or six hours, right? So, so let's take that example, right? If I'm not eating until lunchtime, which is about five hours after I eat, or after I wake up, right? So we just, we, <laughs> We, we had our combined time that's 10, 11 hours, plus we had that five hours, that's 15 hours out of a 24 hour period that we're not eating, right? That is not good, not good for our body, not good for our metabolism, not good for our overall health and wellness, right? At that point, <clears throat> over the course of time, our body is actually not really understanding when its next meal is going to come, and therefore it starts to store fat. And it never stores fat, let's get real here, it never stores fat in places that you don't really care about. It always stores fat where? In your gut, in your butt, in your thighs, right? Probably your uh, your arms, your uh, your uh, biceps up here, right? Maybe your, your chin gets a little bit bigger. And that's where your body is just doing, and that's its defense mechanism, right? When you're not eating for that long, your body doesn't know what to do with itself, right? It, it needs, your body needs um, a specific, a specific amount of nutrients per day, right? And if it's not getting those nutrients on a daily basis, your body is actually smart enough to realize that, you know, your schedule is a different type than it needs to be on, right? So it's going to store fat from the food that you give it in a, or as a defense mechanism because it doesn't understand when it's going to get its next meal. Now, this is something that over time, we can, we can adapt to it and we can change it, right? Because we are at the very base of it, right? Creatures of habit, right? So our body is going to adjust with what we do as our habit on a daily basis. So if we make it a habit to not eat, right? Our body is going to make it a habit to store fat so that it can have the nutrients that it needs when it, when it needs it. So if we get in the habit of eating, Eating breakfast right away, you know, it uh, it um, uh, boosts your metabolism, right? It helps it to, to keep going, keep working on it on like over time, right? Think about it as uh, um, actually think about your body as a car in the winter, right? Follow me for a minute. So in the winter time, when your car is really cold, you can't just start it and go. There's no way. It, you, you, your engine's not he heated up, right? Your your fluids probably, depending on the type of cold, right? Your fluids probably aren't flowing through the car very uh, easily, right? So it, when you're when you start your car in the winter, you need to warm it up a little bit. Think about that. Think about your body's metabolism as a car in the winter. You can't just get up and go, right? You need to get up and you need to you, you need to sort of start, right? Rev the engine. Exponent Cow 222, what's up, man? How are you? 12 a.m. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us at midnight in your hometown. I very much, we all very much appreciate your dedication. I'm so glad that you could take time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. 
Hopefully I can provide you some value. Uh, we are talking ways to be healthier, and the first one is to eat breakfast. Breakfast is arguably the most important meal of the day, and it will help you to maintain a healthy lifestyle over the course of your life. Number two, exercise. This one is really, you know, at the forefront of everybody's, um, uh, you know, tips when they talk about being healthier, living a healthier lifestyle, adapting the healthier lifestyle. And I actually like talking about it from a busy schedule perspective, right? So when we've got busy schedules, we can't always find time to add things to our schedule. And people are always talking about, you know, a, a half an hour to an hour, sometimes more of exercise per day every single day, right? And I get it, right? Trying to find an hour every single day to incorporate exercise is not always the easiest thing to do. Gotta go, sorry, hey man, no problem, I totally get it. It's midnight over there, have a good sleep. We enjoy it, we appreciate your uh, your company while we had it. Um, so exercise, and, and that, like I get it, right? And then also too, when you're thinking about exercise, it's one of those things that, you know, I, I gotta get a gym membership, and then I gotta get, you know, uh, the, 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 the clothes for it, and then I gotta get the water bottle, and then I gotta get, you know, those armbands, cause we, you know, those armbands look really cool. Then I gotta get a headband for if I sweat, right? Oh, then I need a towel, cause if I sweat, right? I need a towel. And I, I, I get it. Right, you can get so overwhelmed with thinking about all the things that go and that get involved in in doing exercise. Right, so that's where it can seem like an overwhelming task, like you don't have any time for it. <coughs> Excuse me. That's where I love talking about how to incorporate exercise into a busy lifestyle. Right, don't think about it as exercise. Thinking about fitting it in wherever you can. Right. It doesn't have to be going to the gym. It can be, you know, something as simple as parking further from the door at the grocery store and then just walking a little bit more, right? Um, it can be something as, uh, you know, if you're, uh, if you're normally take the elevator, you take the stairs if it's, if at all possible. Maybe if it's not possible to take the stairs the whole way, you get off a, a, you know, a floor, maybe two before your, your actual stop and then <laughs> Excuse me. And then uh, you take the stairs up that way. I get that. I'm, I live in an apartment building. If I was to tell me to uh, walk up the stairs, I live on the ninth floor. So if I was to tell myself to walk up the stairs nine floors every day, every single time I left the house, I, I tell myself to kick rocks, right? It's not going to happen. But I can do that. I can get off at, say, the eighth floor and walk up a, a flight of stairs, maybe the seventh floor, depending on what you're doing, right? If you've got groceries, laundry, all that stuff, you know, it, it's, it's definitely take it as you will, right? Do what you can with what you've got. But if you can get off, right, uh, a floor earlier, maybe two floors earlier, and just incorporate that into your lifestyle, right? We're not trying to, you know, o completely overhaul our whole life here. We're trying to add in a couple things that we can do on a daily basis in order to, you know, change our lifestyle for the better, to have a better life, you know, the, for the rest of it, right? So, little thing, and that's the, the best thing about life and exercise in general, is that there's not a million different things that you need to do. There's a couple things that you need to do over the course of time that will help you achieve the results that you want. Number three, eat more protein. Protein is a great way to send a signal to your brain, signifying that it's hungry, or that it's hungry, signifying that it's full. Um, side note, water. Definitely want to be incorporating more water into your daily routine. <laughs> but for protein, we're talking about about 30% of your daily caloric needs come from protein. Right, so what are we talking about the daily caloric um, uh, needs? Uh, normally, you see on the boxes, people or uh, companies uh, labels have been generalizing a 2,000 calorie diet. Right, so if we're talking 30 percent, what's 10 percent of 2,000 is 200. So 30 percent would be 600 calories coming from our protein. Now, we also want to look at different types of protein that we're having, right? Because Red meat is great for uh, helping with your brain health, but it also promotes high cholesterol. Um, fish oil or fish is great for promoting uh, overall, uh, what is it, um, 
uh, like central nervous system uh, help, right? But too much fish, right? Again, creates high cholesterol. Um, you you want to be adding protein to your diet, but you want to not <clears throat> overload it, right? There's there's <laughs> that that's what it is more than anything. We can uh, uh, <laughs> we can have it good all the way up to a certain point, right? Everything is good for us in moderation for the most part, right? But it's when we start going overboard, that's when it gets a little bit unhealthy for us. That's when it gets to, a, to an unmanageable point. So if there's one thing that you can do to <clears throat> make sure that you're living an overall healthy lifestyle, is to definitely incorporate more protein into your diet and allow your body to use it. Protein is actually considered a macronutrient. And what that means is that our body needs a significant amount of it on a daily basis. So that's why we need to incorporate more protein into our diet. It's going to help keep us fuller for longer. It's going to send signals to our brain that we're full. And it's going to help us keep or get over that sort of mid-afternoon, you know, hunger, if you will. Uh, it can be very easy, right, from lunchtime to dinner time. I get it, to get really hungry. That's why we eat protein at our lunch, have a little protein snack if we can, uh, readily available so that we don't have to... Uh, to go out, buy fast food, or even hit the vending machine for some chips and or chocolate bars. Side note on a chips and a pop, right? If you do that for a snack, um, the calories in the can of Coke, right? If we're just doing a little can, 355 milliliters, is about 150 calories. And then the same for the, one of those little bags of chips. So if we're doing, if we're having that as a snack, that's 300 calories, give or take, and all the other you know, garbage that goes inside of those. And that's just for a snack that we're having, right? So that's where we need to, if we're doing that for a snack, we need to over, we're, we're cutting out calories from a different part of our day. And that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to cut out too much food from our day. We want to just be eating the right types of food. Number four, sleep better. This one, I'm not talking about sleep more. <laughs> There is a huge difference between sleeping more and sleeping better. I promise you that. Because you can get 12 hours of the worst sleep possible and you will not feel any slight of refreshment. But you can get seven, six, seven hours of a nice deep, uh, you know, one of those REM sleeps and you can feel very much more refreshed than at any point of your life. So this is where I'm talking about sleep better. And in order to get a better sleep, you got to find a way to uh, calm and relax yourself at the end of the day, right? I get it. We all live very busy on the go lifestyles. There's so much going on and it can be very hard to unwind at the end of the day. It can be very hard to just, you know, completely go from go, 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 just to stop right away and go to bed, right? I get it. I get it. Tons of, hundred, hundred percent. I get it because we are not built like that. We're not built to just go, go, go and then stop. As much as we're not built to just rest all night and then immediately get up and go. There's no way. We have to have that warm up period and we have to have that cool down period. So do things that can help you to relax at the end of the night. Um, you know, consider a hot shower or a bath if you like that. Uh, that would, that's definitely a great way to, uh, to, to help yourself calm down at the end of the night. Consider, uh, you know, a tea, nice tea at the end of the night. That can help you calm down for sure. Uh, another thing could be to, uh, watch your, the screens on your phone. They emit some light that actually burns your eyes, right? So you need to, um, it, it's recommended, I guess, an hour maybe two hours before uh, bedtime that you turn off all screens and you allow your eyes to sort of rest and recover. That can be a great way because, um, you know, when you're, when you're looking at your phone, especially in the dark, right, all, all night, and then trying to go to sleep, your, your brain is actually still awake, right? Everything in your body's still awake as much as you know you need to go to bed. So it can be very hard to get that good sleep. And it can also be, you know, a few hours before you even get to sleep, right? So... Do what you can to sort of calm yourself down at the end of the night. For me, I love using essential oils. Essential oil, uh, like lavender, is actually a great one. Cedar wood is a perfect one. A uh, nice, calming, relaxing woodsy oil. Number five. So we are talking today uh, different ways to be healthier when you have a busy schedule. Number one, eat breakfast. Number two, exercise. Number three, eat more protein. 
Number four, sleep better. Number five, meal prep. <laughs> meal prep, meal prep, meal prep, meal prep, meal prep, meal prep. I can say it all day. I can keep talking about it until the cows come home. This was one of the, the best things that I ever got shown to me and it was actually by Tina and she's the one that does all the research around here and understands every single bit about how to make living easier and meal prep has been one of the best things that ever happened to us because I like right off the bat right the title when you live a bit when you have a busy schedule and meal prep is perfect for when you have a busy schedule, especially for me, um, when I'm when I'm on days, uh, we start at six o'clock in the morning, right? So for me to wake up, cook breakfast, get my lunch prepared, and then have snacks ready and on the go, and still be ready to get out and go and, and be on the go, that's it takes a lot out of you, right? It's not always the the easiest thing to do. That's why we love taking Sunday, you know, maybe Monday if we forget, maybe Monday is kind of a cheat day, um, and, and do the meal prep for at least a few days. We're talking at least three, four days, and even the fifth day if you can, because it'll just take one less thing or one thing off of your plate. It's one less thing that you have to worry about. And when we're, you know, living a busy lifestyle and we don't have enough time as is, right? We always feel like if we had an extra hour or two in the day, everything else, everything would just kind of fall in place. And that's why we have to do what we can with what we've got, right? We all have 24 hours in a day. It's all just how you spend them. And when you think about, when you do your meal prep, it's just extra time that you get on another day, right? You're taking time out of one day. And for us, it's not even really taking time out of the day. When we do meal prep, it's something like, uh, um, uh, like a stir fry, right? Maybe a, a lasagna, a pasta dish, something like that. We do this egg bite dish for breakfast. And this is all stuff that we're just, you know, making like four or five times the amount and we're just loading it all up and just cooking a big dish in that way. A roast is another one that we love to do. And that way we can just have uh, food for multiple days and we don't have to be worrying about what we're going to cook every single day because it can get very much overwhelming. Number six, adapt the mindset, right? At the end of the day, there's a mindset that needs to be taken. We can either think of it as this thing that is happening and we need to adjust to it and you know, it's, it's oh my God, I guess I gotta eat my vegetables and I guess I can get on board with being healthy and yeah, I guess I can take, you know, five minutes out of my day to cook a sand or to make a sandwich or something. You know, it's, it's so much easier for us to not want to do the healthy things, right? Not eat the vegetables, uh, not cook the food that we have. And then, you know, it, it's a couple days later and you're like, oh, well, you know, that food's bad anyways. I can't even cook it. Let's order a pizza. It's so much easier to do that. Trust me, I know. I'm a huge pizza fan. I eat pizza every single day, all day. Trust me, I will do it. Um, but at the end of the day, we need to adapt the mindset, right? The mindset has to be that I am doing this for my own health and wellness. I am doing this for the, <clears throat> the betterment of my family so that I can be there for them in my later stages of life, right? And when you're 20, 30, maybe even 40, it doesn't really matter because you're like, oh, I got my whole life ahead of me. No problem. I can do some, you know, some dumb stuff and still get away with it. And then I still got time to change. But what, what, what you really don't realize is if you don't really make a conscious effort on, you know, most of the time, then it can get really far away from you, right? Years can pass and you don't even really realize what happened to you. You're a completely different person and you didn't mean it, right? You didn't try it. You just got nudged a little bit, a little bit off course, a little bit off course. And then you ended up all the way over here and you're like, well, why did I get over here? And you don't know, you just got pushed a little bit and then a little bit and a little bit at a time. And now you're all of a sudden not even close to the to living the, the, the goals and the dreams that you had for yourself when you were younger, right? So really just, you know, it, it's something that you have to just, I, I mean, for lack of a better term, get over it, right? You got to You got to eat the healthy stuff. You have to do the healthy things that 
um, are going to better your life because I, I like I love the quote that I read. Um, you've got one body to live in, right? You've only got the one body, so you might as well take care of it because it's you're going to ask it to take care of you, right? So it's a give and take. It, it, it's a two way street over here. You got to help yourself out. My last tip, more than anything, is essential oils. Uh, essential oil blend that I got here called Zengest. Zengest is actually the digestive blend from doTERRA uh, and it's great for promoting healthy digestive system, um, healthy digestive function, right? <clears throat> I heard something along the lines of um, there's as many if not more, maybe a little bit less, but right around the same amount of neurons in your gut as in your brain. So there's as much if not more going on in your gut as in your brain at all times. So that's why we need to, you know, we do things to help our brain health and we normally uh, let our gut health go by the wayside. That's why we have to do things to help promote that healthy digestive system. Uh, my another blend here is Zendocrine. Zendocrine goes along with the digestive system. It is the uh, detoxification blend. It's great for cleansing, detoxifying your system, right? If you're not completely conscious about it, there could be a lot of buildup and gunk going on in your, in your body that every once in a while, and you know what? Even if you are healthy and conscious about it, every once in a while, you just need to go through a little bit of a detox. You just need to, you know, clean out your insides from, you know, clean out your life, right? From an inside out perspective. Um, spring cleaning is uh, something that we just went through, right? And that's sort of a detox for your house. Why not give your, your body a nice little detox? And my last blend here is Serenity. And Serenity is the restful blend from doTERRA. And that one is great for promoting that restful environment that I talked about. That is great for helping to, uh, to, to get to sleep and help you sleep throughout the night, right? I love using that one. I use that one. Actually, we like using that one in a spray mist uh, that we mist over our uh, bed sheets and our pillow. Um, I love using a drop on the pillow. Uh, essential oils at the very base of it are volatile aromatic compounds. All that means is that it'll switch states from a gas or a liquid to a gas very quickly before it stains your sheets. So you don't really have to worry about the stains on it. I, I mean, I love it. I, I, I love the way that it just calms me down and promotes that relaxing environment and allows me to sleep throughout the night. That's all I got for you for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you guys uh, found some value out of this. I know I had some fun making it. Feel free to share this with your friends, a family member, perhaps somebody from your team that you feel needs to hear this. If you'd like to learn more about essential oils or how to get your hands on some of this cool stuff I'm talking about, or if you would like a free sample of oils just to try it out for yourself before you make the commitment, definitely reach out to me. Uh, drop me a comment, send me a message saying me, and we'll get you rocking and rolling. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week, and I look very forward to talking to you again. I love you guys. Bye for now.